In Monster Hunter World, you've got a choice of 14 different weapons, which can be pretty daunting if you're a newcomer to the game, franchise, or just the genre. In an effort to unburden you from that decision, I'm going to go over 5 different weapons that will allow you to be super powerful in the game, providing a brief but comprehensive overview of each one. If instead you're looking for a breakdown of all 14 weapons, you can check out any of the all weapon overviews I've done, they'll give you a really good oversight. Very quickly, the channel currently sits at around 80% unsubscribed viewers with the majority of you returning from shorts or otherwise if you enjoy the videos do subscribe and with that said let's jump in the great sword is one of the poster weapons of the franchise demanding excellent timing positioning and precision in order to get the best use out of it featuring strings of charging attacks that plants your hunter in place powering up levels to deliver devastating single strike damage with the true charge slash being the strongest individual attack in the entire game the relatively slow attack speed and the nature of planting Planting your hunter in place and charging up for attacks are all facets of the weapon that make it quite an advanced choice and difficult for newcomers to pick up and play. This is due to the actual attack and combo inputs being relatively straightforward. Where the complexity lies is in the monster knowledge, so that you can build a better understanding of when and where you can plant yourself for these charging attacks. It's a very common experience for new players who try out greatsword to just constantly get knocked on their ass all the time, which can be super frustrating and off-putting. However, this can be effectively mitigated by relying more so on your draw attacks. Knowing that it's a weapon that has charging levels and charging combos makes it very tempting to always do that, especially when you see the massive dong damage numbers that you're dishing out. But by stripping it back a little bit and relying more on the draw attacks and not necessarily always level 3 charging every single strike that you deal, you'll give yourself that extra bit of space and breathing room to dish out really good damage without constantly getting smacked away. This will be further re reinforced by effective use of the weapon's defensive maneuvers too. The greatsword allows you to guard, helping you to mitigate and minimize damage in situations that you might not be able to get out of. You can also tackle through attacks which gives you hyper armor and very high damage mitigation. A super effective pass through. Both of these allowing you to be more dynamic and staying in the fight for longer. The more you use the weapon and you get used to the various monsters that you're facing off against, the better you're going to get at any of the weapons that you use, which you will feel very strongly with the greatsword in particular. As you improve upon your timing and positioning, you will land more of your TCSs, and that just feels so goddamn good. If you want to adopt a high-risk, high-reward playstyle, where timing is crucial, that unleashes the highest single strike damage in the game, Greatsword is your choice. The Sword and Shield is a very flexible weapon with very high mobility, and a low commitment, diverse moveset, giving you many options to deal with any given scenario. It allows you to very easily string combos together with infinite chains, that are very effective at bursting out large amounts of damage very quickly. Whilst your regular Y and B combos are very effective with this, none is more so than the perfect rush combo. A string of disgustingly powerful strikes executed one after another in quick succession that can devastate any monster. Improving upon your timing and placing of executing these perfect rushes and how you can get into the back step which then follows onto the combo will be pivotal in you unlocking the most amount of damage that this weapon can deal. Speaking of the back step, this inbuilt evasive maneuver has the highest amount of iframes in the game, outside of Foresight Slash on Longsword that's more of a counter kind of thing, which can and should be implemented into your core gameplay of the weapon, both for getting out of the way of damage and for creating opportunities and damage windows for your perfect rush. You have a shield which you can use to block attacks in a pinch, it's by no means the best block but it has it like the greatsword has one, it's useful if you need it, but the majority of your defensive capabilities should come from the fact that the weapon has such great mobility. Your movements speed is brilliant and unrestricted, you can sheathe the weapon very fast, and as just mentioned, you've got access to the back step with the tremendous iframes. Especially when paired with Evade Window 5, my goodness, you can back step through so much, allowing you to keep your aggression and uptime super high, and maximize your damage output via perfect rushes or your regular combos. If you're looking for a single all-rounder which can do absolutely everything, including stunning monsters with your shield bash, whilst also being able to quickly output some of the highest damage in the game, yeah, I know. No, it kind of sounds a little bit too good to be true, but that's sword and shield for you, and if it sounds good, give it a spin. The hammer offers best in class low commitment for high damage input strikes, sitting somewhere between greatsword and faster hitting weapons, with solid mobility whilst you've got the weapon drawn, offering simple to understand combo strings, weapon charging functionality whilst you're on the move, and a very strong static combo called the big bang attack, seeing your hunter plant themselves in place and unleash a string of attacks in succession to absolutely bonk the sh 
knocked out of a monster, the amount of damage you output during your regular combo strings, and utilizing the various levels of the charge attacks, truly are tremendous bang for your buck. In terms of commitment to damage, you'll fire out your regular combo with a couple of strikes and then an upswing, and you'll look at the damage numbers thinking, Jesus Christ! The weapon deals blunt damage, which is very useful as certain monsters will be more weak to that compared to cut or ammo. You'll find that you get a ton of part breaks, and that you of course get loads of KOs, giving you all of these additional damage windows to go to absolute town on the monsters. Given the fluidity of the follow-up clutch claw attacks you can do after various inputs, a good hammer user will ensure a monster is tenderized constantly, whilst not having to compromise on their own damage with the traditional clutch claw attack. Where it does get tricky is the range of the attacks are very short, you really have to get into the action, and it has no inbuilt defensive capabilities, it's just you, your hammer, and your dodge roll. Like the great sword, this thing is such a power trick. It feels like you are smashing these giant monsters all over the arena, mostly because that's exactly what you're bloody doing. It's sick. If you want a weapon that has simple combo inputs whilst delivering high damage, allows you to dynamically keep the monster's parts tenderized while scoring tons of KOs to keep it down, you're going to want to join the ranks of the Bonk Brotherhood. The KO Kens, the Dong Dynasty, will be the younger to your bunger. Trust in the Bonk, for it is strong. The Charge Blade is another very versatile weapon that's capable of transforming between two different states. You've got the sword and shield form, giving you access to swift strikes, the blocking capabilities with your shield, and better overall mobility for the weapon compared to its other form. The various strikes that you land in sword and shield form, particularly the charged attack, will build up weapon charge. This can be stored to then load up files, which are then consumed through various means and various attacks to dish out additional damage. When transformed into axe mode, your hunter moves relatively slower than the sword and shield form, but is capable of dishing out big damage with those slower heavy swings. If you have files loaded up, here's where you can unleash some magic. A big devastating SAED attack, the elemental discharge combo strings, or transforming it into savage axe mode and unlocking the pizza cutter. Very versatile in a way that's different from sword and shield for example, offering fantastic defensive capabilities with inbuilt repositioning maneuvers, use of your shield, and performing something called guard points, whereby various attacks which places the shield in front of the hunter, such as the axe transformational attack, when timed properly will automatically block the monster's attack, allowing for very fanciful dynamic gameplay, weaving in and out of the fight, having an answer to any given situation. All of the various combo inputs and the management of the actual meters themselves does mean that the weapon takes a little bit of getting used to and understanding. It is, essentially, on paper, the most complex melee weapon. Still completely viable for a newcomer, any of the weapons are, but relatively, it will be harder to pick up compared to something else. An option that demands the correct process order, good meter management, and quick thinking on how to respond to certain situations, the charge blade is an exceptionally powerful Swiss army knife that gives you a powerful solution to anything you might face. The bow is is one of the three ranged weapons in the game that has the potential to be the strongest out of all 14. It can really pack a punch, this thing can be devastating. Placing the hunter at more of a medium to short range rather than a long range weapon, you have unlimited arrows you will fire in quick succession at various charge levels, with consecutive attacks increasing this passively rather than having to hold it down. As this charge level increases, the number of arrows fired with the attacks also increases, exponentially boosting the damage output from its base zero charge. You also have excellent inbuilt mobility using the bow, giving you tons of flair and good evasive maneuvers. When it comes to high risk, high reward though, nothing quite manages it like bow does. You're effectively a glass cannon as your damage mitigation is naturally lower compared to other weapons. Yeah, you just take more damage for using the bow. Every attack, every single draw on the bow, and every dash consumes stamina. It's the most stamina hungry weapon in the game and your stamina management is absolutely crucial here. It kind of turns it into more of a souls game and it'll very easily get you carted. The coating management is a pain in the ass too, you can only come out with 50 power coats, so you'll likely have to frequently go back to camp just to top up. But while there are all these downsides, there are a tremendous amount of upsides too. As mentioned, it can be the strongest weapon in the game, just outright, objectively speaking. It's a fantastic candidate for elemental damage. Whilst the use cases are few and far between, because in world, elemental was done dirty big time and raw really is king, with the monsters that it does line up with, you can do some crazy stuff with elemental. Elemental. But for the most part, you're good with a Fatalis Bow, that's going to be absolutely devastating. It also has a couple of really cool special attacks you can do. Both Dragon Piercer and Thousand Dragons are just really fun ways to play the bow. You can make some very unique builds centered around those moves to just deal some crazy
crazy damage with them. If you tend to favor ranged weapons and you want something that's going to guarantee fast high octane gameplay, whilst not minding the downsides of it being a glass cannon and the intense stamina management as well, well then bow's your pick Hawkeye and it's going to see you absolutely shred these beasties. Whilst I've selected five weapons here which are all very strong, very powerful, absolutely all of them are viable and can be devastating in the right hands. For a more in-depth breakdown of all 14 of the weapons, you can catch my all weapon overview guys which will help you pick what you want to play. As mentioned at the start, we're sitting at around 80% unsubscribed viewers on the channel with the majority of you returning from shorts or otherwise. If you enjoy the videos, do subscribe. We do open sessions over on the Discord and during the live streams on Twitch. I will leave all of these links for you in the description. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you in the new world.